And pitching for the Pirates this afternoon, number 28, Steve Blass. Steve Blass was a self-described skinny kid from Falls Village, Connecticut, the son of a plumber who was signed right out of high school by the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1960. He pitched in the minor leagues for five years on six different teams before he was called up to the Pirates to stay in 1966. For most of his early career, Blass was a pretty decent pitcher. In 1968, Blass came into his own, posting an 18-6 record, an ERA of 2.12, and threw three consecutive shutouts. But 1969 and 1970 weren't as successful for him. Steve rebounded in 1971 with a 15-8 record and 2.85 ERA. But it was in October where Steve Blass gave one of the most outstanding pitching performances in World Series history. The Pirates were facing a tough Baltimore Orioles team that had won 100 games in each of the three previous seasons. They were the defending world champions. The Orioles started by winning the first two games of the series in Pittsburgh. Steve Blass started Game 3. He pitched a complete game victory, only allowing one run on three hits. And the final score, Pittsburgh 5, Baltimore 1. Pittsburgh won games four and five, while the Orioles won game six in Baltimore. This set up the climactic seventh game, with Steve Blass again the starting pitcher. Blass repeated his magical performance from game three. In game seven, he dominated the Orioles again, only giving up one run on four hits. He pitched a three-hitter at Pittsburgh to beat the Orioles. He's pitched a four-hitter so far today, and he's leading two to one. There's a drive up the middle. Hernandez in back of the bag. He's got him, Jackie Hernandez. Look at Blast. Blast has pitched the Pirates to the World Championship. This iconic photograph captured the youthful exuberance of Steve Blass winning the World Series. In 18 innings of World Series play, Steve Blass only allowed two runs on seven hits for an ERA of 1.0. I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is the biggest thrill that could ever happen. I, I don't believe it. From a skinny kid from Falls Village, Connecticut. <laughs> and here with me right now, the greatest right fielder in the game of baseball, Roberto Clemente. He finished second in the World Series MVP voting to Roberto Clemente. Blas continued his domination in 1972, which was his best individual season. He finished the year with a 19-8 record, an ERA of 2.49, and finished second for the Cy Young Award. But suddenly, inexplicably, it was over for Steve Blass. On opening day 1973, Blass allowed five runs in five innings. In his third start on April 22nd, he gave up three walks, four hits, and hit two batters. He was gone after three innings. In Atlanta, the wheels came off. On June 11th, 1973, Blass only lasted three and a third innings and gave up eight hits, two walks, and had five wild pitches. Two days later, now pitching out of the bullpen, in one and a third innings, he gave up seven runs, five hits, six walks, and had three wild pitches. There was no explanation for Steve's sudden loss of control. No matter what he tried or who he talked to, he just couldn't get the ball over the plate. On August 6, 1973, Pirates manager Bill Verdon had Blast start the Cooperstown Hall of Fame exhibition game against the Texas Rangers, hoping this might help his confidence. It didn't work. Blast lasted just two and a third innings, giving up four runs on three hits and walking five batters. He only pitched in three more games the rest of the 1973 season, finishing the year with a 3-9 and nine record and a 9.81 ERA. He had 84 walks in 89 innings, with only 27 strikeouts. By the time Topps released this card in 1974, Steve Blass's career was pretty much over. In spring training, Blass had 25 walks in 14 innings pitched. In one outing against the White Sox, he walked eight men in one inning. On April 17, 1974, Blass pitched five innings, gave up eight runs on five hits, and walked seven. That would be Steve Blass's last major league appearance. He was sent down to the minors and spent the rest of the 1974 season in AAA Charleston. But things did not improve in Charleston. Blass walked 103 batters in 61 innings with an ERA of 9.74. He hit 16 batters and had 12 wild pitches. Finally, after a bad outing during spring training in 1975, the Pirates released him. 
there would be no 1975 Topps card. By that time, Steve Blass was working for a company that makes championship and high school graduation rings. Thankfully, this story doesn't have a sad ending. In 1983, Steve returned to baseball and became a color man for Pirates cable TV telecasts. He started calling games on the radio in 1986. Today, Steve still works for the Pirates, broadcasting home games on radio and TV. He plans to retire at the end of the 2019 season after almost 60 years with the Pirates. Today, Steve Blass holds no bitterness over the sudden unraveling of his major league career. He says, what I'm really proud of is I'm 74 and 2. I'm 76 years old. I've had 74 great years. I've had two of them that were quite bad, Blass said. But 74 and 2 ain't bad. I'm proud of that. One of the joys of the hobby is how these cards tell a story, how they give us some living history or memory of seasons past. I hope you get to experience some of that with your own cards.